I'm Ed Poole. And I'm Susan Poole. And this is Louisiana Film History Flashback. In this episode, we take a look at a story about the retirement of a college sports legend. And in Louisiana, we take college sports very seriously. So this film caused some controversy. In 1981, when Sports Illustrated writer Frank DeFord released his sports novel, Everybody's All-American, he wanted to focus on athletes that achieve a lot of fame and then quite often have problems when they retire and try to fit back into normal life. When the film began production, the University of North Carolina, which was the setting for the book, was approached for the filming location, but many thought that some scenes were too close to a football legend there. Then it's rumored that Mississippi State University was approached with the same results. When LSU finally accepted, the rumors started flying that many scenes were similar to a local legend as well. When questioned about the person in the film, DeFord stated that the main character was no single person, but a composite of general trends of numerous football legends whose careers he had followed over the years. One oddity was that Dennis Quaid wanted to make a tackle scene look more realistic, so he told the players to tackle like they normally would. Quaid laid on the ground in pain with a broken rib, but the director kept the camera rolling and put it in the film. Another oddity, while filming a key scene featuring a parade to the state capitol building, for the first time in 16 years, it started snowing. But the director decided to reshoot the scene later, saying that no one would believe it would really snow in Baton Rouge in November. So let's flash back to 1988 for the All-American sports film, Everybody's All-American. Everybody's All-American is a 1988 American sports drama based on the novel of the same name by longtime Sports Illustrated writer Frank DeFord. The story follows Gavin Gray, everyone's All-American star college running back in the late 1950s. After college, Gavin goes on to the NFL where he has a solid career. As his playing days wind down and the cheering stops, however, he finds the adjustment to life as an ex-athlete difficult to accept. His wife becomes the primary breadwinner of the family while Gavin continues to trade on his memories of old times when he was everybody's All-American. In 1956, Gavin Gray was pure Louisiana. You got a church key? That's what made him wild. Ah! Babs Rogers. Look at Babs. She was the perfect beauty queen. That's what made her his. I just want to be yours, Gavin. I just want to be Mrs. Gavin Gray. He was the kind of man every woman wanted and every man wanted to be. First round draft pick. I guess that means the Redskins. I'm special just as long as I keep making touchdowns. Welcome to the big leagues, golden boy. The ghost has got debts. I'm still playing football, ain't I? For how many years, Gavin? One, two? What's it gonna do to ghosts if you're the one making a living? Well, the living has to be made, Mr. Blue, one way or another. I'm running this place, Gavin, and I'm good at it. It's killing me, Babs. I didn't ask to be the great ghost. I'm just Gavin. Oh, Gavin, I love you. Warner Brothers presents Jessica Lange, Dennis Quaid, Timothy Hutton, in a story that celebrates the glory of youth, the challenge of life, and the endurance of love through the years. Everybody's All-American, directed by Taylor Hackford. Their life story is a love story. Everybody's All-American starred Dennis Quaid, Jessica Lang, Timothy Hutton, John Goodman, Carl Lumbly, and Louisiana native Patricia Clarkson. It was directed by Taylor Hackford. Although the novel tells the story of a University of North Carolina football player, according to Variety magazine, the school denied Warner Brothers' use of its Chapel Hill campus for filming during the spring of 1984, claiming that the presence of a major motion picture crew would be too disruptive while classes were in session. After three years of production and cast revisions, the decision was made to change the school location to LSU in Baton Rouge. Location shooting began in November of 1987 and lasted for 14 weeks. On November the 7th, 
football scenes were shot during the halftime of the 1987 LSU-Alabama game. The producers wanted to continue shooting some scenes following the game, so they requested that the LSU fans remain after the game so they could finish the scenes. However, Alabama won in an upset, and ten minutes after the game, the only fans still in the bleachers were wearing crimson, forcing the producers to finish shooting the following week. Actual game footage continued to be filmed during the halftimes of LSU games. The goal posts were altered to resemble the vintage H post as needed during filming. Vertical posts were moved into place from the bottom portion of the H, and a multicolored fabric covering was used to conceal the center upright. Upon completion of filming, the vertical post and fabric were retracted so as not to interfere with the LSU games. For the Tigers pep rally, which opens the film's action in 1956, more than 1,500 students carried torches and a 30-foot-high bonfire seared the night sky. This scene was filmed in downtown Baton Rouge in front of the state capitol building. After a holiday break, production resumed on January the 26, 1988. Filming locations included the Country Club of Louisiana, the Frost Top on Government Street, LSU sorority and fraternity houses, and a suburban house located in St. Francisville. The home was transformed from a bleak, wintry exterior to a lush summertime facade by grass-green spray paint and a garden full of overblown roses arranged by the props department. The 11th floor of the deserted Capitol House Hotel filled in as Washington, D.C. apartments, where the lights of downtown Baton Rouge double for Washington on one side and the Mississippi River served as the Potomac River on the other. The Grey Ghost Inn was the site of Jack Sabin's restaurant, which was at the time in bankruptcy, but still had a complete functioning kitchen with all the essential requirements, which was also used to feed the cast and crew. Louisiana mansions also provided backgrounds for interior and exterior shots, including the 21-acre Charbonnet Estate and Nottaway, one of the largest antebellum plantation homes in the South. Nottaway, built in 1859, was the setting for the film's Magnolia Queen crowning ceremonies. Spanish Town, a colorful neighborhood on the edge of Baton Rouge, became the scene of a pivotal, dramatic point in the story. Although only one street was used to film, the entire community turned out to welcome the cast and crew. Following extensive research at NFL Films, Hackford spent two weeks rehearsing the professional football sequences with players who were hired to reenact several difficult and historic plays. The games were staged at Southern University Mumford Stadium in Baton Rouge and the War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas, and shot using 16mm film to provide a visual match to the NFL footage in the Denver Broncos sequences. According to news reports, Quaid had his collarbone broken by Tim Fox of the New England Patriots during one of the plays. The footage of the injury can be seen in the final film. LSU provided extensive facilities, including Tiger Stadium, home of the LSU Tigers. Here, the production team recreated a different era, with 1956 cheerleaders, period costumed extras in certain sections of the stands, as well as advertising slogans, sideline markers, and goalposts of an earlier time. Everybody's All-American premiered in Los Angeles and New York on November the 4th, 1988. It was released in international markets as When I Fall in Love. This has been a presentation of Hollywood on the Bayou, preserving Louisiana's rich film history with books, prints, presentations, and exhibits. If you have questions, comments, or to learn more, you can visit our Facebook page or sign up for our Louisiana and Film newsletter, which is on our website, hollywoodonthebayou.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Louisiana Film History Flashback. Sue and I thank you, and we'll see you next time.